I had uh, taken some notes earlier. I don't know if, uh, if everybody saw this. I was on a, a webinar earlier today that Dan Schwartz over at InvestorFuse had put together, just talking about recession proofing your business and strategies. And they had me on as the guy talking about creative financing stuff. And I just had made some notes that I, I didn't get to share them all on that webinar. I think they're really uh, pertinent and relevant here. The thing is like, you know, like we're talking about here, creative financing, seller financing, that is the key. Because you're not only getting that front end payday on like these tenant buyer lease options or the down payments on the seller finance deals, you're also creating cash flow, uh, which allows you to hold your properties through the downturn all the way up back on the backside to the upturn that's and jeff you and i were talking about that the other day mm -hmm. you know now you know jeff and i we're like shoot let's go buy up a hundred of these houses and just as long as we don't have to sell because it's cash flowing then the drop in the market doesn't affect you like it a drop in values really only matters is if you have to sell well that's what all these rehabbers uh, are doing out there in the burr guys when they got to refinance, which is essentially kind of like selling the property back to your stuff and new loan. Um, so as long as you don't have to sell, you can really spend make a bunch of money. Uh, the other notes I had here was, you know, you need low equity strategies. Now, right now, equity is probably pretty high overall. Just if you look at total mortgage debt versus total value of the housing supply and everything else. But in a downturn, that housing value goes down. So now that equity shrinks, right? So eventually, and maybe it's now, maybe it's uh, later, but eventually you will need low equity strategies and what uh, I typically refer to as equity injection strategies. And that is again, the creative financing, the seller financing, that sort of thing. Because we can create equity out of thin air when we sell it to our buyer at a premium, higher price, higher than market value because we're providing the financing with it. So that's number one. Number two, plan on bank lending drying up. This is what Jeff was just talking about. And uh, one of the guys that was on the panel with, uh, with us earlier today on the call with Dan, uh, he has a hard money lending business. And he was talking about there's already trouble in the secondary market. Uh, if you guys don't know, like all these hard money lenders, they rely on the secondary market because they go uh, do these loans with uh, rehabbers and even the buy and hold guys now and the landlords, right? But then they're just selling those loans out to the secondary market, which is essentially Wall Street and all the big institutional money. Well, all that secondary market has now just dried up. Like after the webinar earlier today, uh, the guy texted me uh, on Messenger and he said, I think it was called Peer Street. I'm not even familiar with all the, the names yeah. of these companies. Jeff, have you heard of Peer Street? I have, yeah. So they are in that secondary market where they're buying loans, or they were, but now they just stopped buying loans altogether. That's $1.5 billion of liquidity that is no longer in the market. So it's going to put a lot of mom and pop uh, hard, money, hard money lenders out of business, uh, the guys who were selling their loans off to get uh, cashed out of their loans and go do it again. Uh, so, but not only the hard money lenders, the private money lenders, but if the bank lending, like, you know, your typical traditional mortgage, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all that sort of thing, if that starts drying up, then owner occupants aren't going to be able to go, you know, get a new loan to buy the rehabber's product. They can't cash the rehabber out. Now the rehabber's stuck and he's going to go out of, go out of business. So that is point number two. And then number three, uh, Ideally, and this is what creative financing and seller financing does for us. I've just touched on this a second ago. You guys already know this. I'm preaching to the choir here, but we want to be unhooked from market value. And when we use seller financing and we don't have to sell it and we can provide that long-term financing, uh, like I said, we can ride that downturn all the way through to the upturn. We don't have to worry about trying to catch a, a falling knife with your bare hands. We don't care about market value because it doesn't affect us unless we have to sell, which we don't. Uh, because we're still cash flowing on our properties.